Right, because there's a lot of harm wrought by cheating, not just for the students who don't learn and may even suffer some emotional consequences from resorting to cheating, that's for the reluctant cheaters, but there's also harm to universities and society. Dr. Biggin, this is one of your major concerns, especially because some important courses are more prone to student cheating. So we get a median of 4% of students cheating across all the exams we've looked at, uh, but it varies greatly by class. And some classes seem to have a more persistent problem, probably because they're considered by the students to be high value because uh, they're important. One is that I teach is required for medical school, and that's one we've had the biggest problem with. Uh, and so that speaks to, I think, is telling you to some extent why students are doing this. It's, and again, to carry on what Karen started, the economic incentives are enormous and the social status of being an MD and the, the tens of thousands of dollars difference in income per year, depending on your GPA, uh, particularly grades in key classes, is an extreme, you know, this is, all you have to do is not tell the truth in this exam and you might get tens of thousands of dollars more. I mean, you have to do it over multiple classes. That's, I think, I think academics are to some extent a little naive at ignoring that incentive. It's an enormous effect. And as to the harm done, we've already discussed, I think, that if students know that other students are cheating, although only a minority cheat, the rest of the student body are aware this is happening, particularly during the pandemic. But if you have a lot of online courses or those courses where people can cheat and do cheat, the other students know. And so if the if the administration, the faculty aren't making what are perceived to be a sufficiently effective uh, attempts to mitigate and stop that cheating, it creates a pall over the environment, the sort of the sense of trust and comfort with the system is corroded somewhat. I don't want to exaggerate that because most students love their universities, but they perhaps love them a little less on this issue. Okay. And so the other harms are the students who cheat really, from my interactions with a number of them, they really, most of them are, are, are remorseful, not all, but the practice ones, the practice cheats are remorseful, but most of them are reluctant and they are remorseful and they'll have to live with that all their lives that they did something like this. And the third harm is to the students who don't cheat. But most classes are graded on a curve. Now we can estimate approximately how much improvement in grade a student gets from cheating. And it's about, it's consistent with other estimates, about 10 percentile or one letter grade. So if a student would have got a B without cheating, they may get a B plus if they collude. Well, if, if because most classes are effectively, the students are judged relative to the students, for every student who goes up a grade, an honest student who didn't cheat goes down a grade. So at 10% of students cheating, that's 20% of the grades are inaccurate. 10% got a grade too much, too high and 10% a grade too low. That's, again, when you consider the amount of, uh, let's just think of, again, we don't like to think of finances, but the, the tens of thousands of dollars of tuition and living expenses that students are paying to, to the institution, to expect the product they're buying, we don't like to say that, but it's an extreme, it's more expensive than a car. This is to purchase something and then it not to be accurate and that accuracy can affect your income. That's an extraordinary thing that you know, we, again, we don't like to think of economics, but, uh, but it's there. And so there are the three harms to the environment, to the individual student who cheats and to the students who don't cheat.